the Odyssey, Book 6, The Meeting Between Nausicaa and Odysseus. So here Odysseus slept, overcome by sleep and toil, but Athena went off to the country and city of the Phaeacians, uh, people who used to live in the fair town of Hyperia, now the lawless Cyclops. Now the Cyclopses were stronger than they plundered them, so that their king, Nausiposus, moved them thence and settled them in the area, far from all other people. He surrounded the city with a wall, built houses and temples, and divided the lands among his people, but he was dead and gone to the house of Hades, and King Alcinos, whose counsels were inspired of heaven and was now reigning, to his house then did Athena high in the furtherance of the return of Odysseus. She went to straight to the beautifully decorated bedroom in which there was such a girl who was lovely as a goddess, Nausicaa, daughter to King Alcinos. Two maid servants were sleeping near her, both very pretty, one on either side of the doorway, which was closed with well-made folding doors. Athena took the form of the famous sea captain Diamas's daughter, who was a bosom friend of Nausicaa, and just her own age. Then coming up to the girl's bedside like a breath of wind, she hovered over her head and said, Nausicaa, what can your mother have been about to have such a lazy daughter? Here are your clothes all lying in disorder, yet you are going to be married almost immediately, and should not only be well dressed yourself, but should find good clothes for those who attend you. This is a way to give yourself a good name and to make your father and mother proud of you. Suppose then that you make tomorrow a watching day and start at daybreak. I will come and help you so as that you may have everything ready as soon as possible. For as all the young men among your own people are courting you, and you are not going to remain a maid much longer, ask your father therefore to have a wagon and mules ready for us at daybreak, to take the rugs, robes, and girdles you can ride too, which will be much pleasanter for you than walking, for the washing cisterns are some way for from the town. <clears throat> When she had said this, Athena went away to Olympus, which they say is everlasting home of the gods. Here no wind beats roughly, and neither rain nor snow can fall, but it abides in everlasting sunshine and the great peacefulness of light, wherein the blessed gods are illumined forever and ever. This was the place to which the goddess went when she had given instructions to the girl. By and by morning came woke Nausicaa, who began wondering about her dream. She therefore went to the other end of the house to tell her father and mother all about it, and found them in their own room. Her mother was sitting by the fireside, spinning her purple yarn with her maids around her, and she happened to kiss her father just as he was going out in the meeting of the town council. While the Phrygian outer man had happened then, then she stopped him and said, Papa dear, could you manage to let me have a good big wagon? I wanted to take all our dirty clothes to the river and wash them. You are the chief man so it is only right that you should have a clean shirt when you attend the meeting at the council. Moreover, you have five sons at home, two of them married, while the other three are good-looking bachelors. You know they always like to have clean linen when they go to a dance, and I have been thinking about all this. She did not say a word about her own wedding, for she did not like to, but her father knew and said, You shall have the mules, my love, and whatever else you have a mind for, be off with you, and the men shall give you a good strong wagon with a body to it that will hold all your clothes. On this he gave his orders to the servants who got the wagon out, harnessed the mules, and put them to, while the girl brought the clothes down from the linen room and placed them on the wagon. Her mother prepared a basket of provisions of all sorts of good things and a goat full of wine. The girl now got into the wagon, and her mother gave her also a golden crust of oil, and that she and her local woman might anoint themselves. Then she took her wooden rings and lashed the mules on. Thereon they set off. When the hooks clattered on the road, they pulled her wagon and carried not only Nausicaa and her wash of clothes, but all the maids also who were with her. 